Hello everyone, I'm Nicola Trezan, also known as Cool Cat VFX. Welcome to the second part of the ArtStation Challenge series. This time, we'll talk about the VFX production part of the challenge. So, let's dive in. Before starting this video, in case you don't know what is the ArtStation Challenge, it's an online art contest. In the VFX production category, participants are tasked to create a spell effect in a game engine using either a concept art from the previous concept art category or their own creation. If you want to know more about the VFX concept art category, you can always check out the first video of the series. Link will be in the description. To validate your submission, the production challenge requires a clean video render of the effect. A presentation shot video of the effect from at least two different angles, as well as a breakdown video or call sheet showcasing the individual emitters, shaders, textures, and models used to assemble the major particle systems. The production challenge started on April 10th, and the entry deadline is May 29th, giving us roughly a month and a half to complete the effect and additional deliverables. Since I had participated in the previous category, I already had two concept arts to choose from. I decided to focus on my favorite one, the Everlasting Love effect, and explore how I could accurately translate it from the concept art to the game engine. Just like what I've done during the creation of the concept art of this effect, I went for a step-by-step -step creation process instead of making a block out of the entire effect. It kinda worked somehow, but I do not advise you to do it. Making a block out of the entire effect will allow you to get a rough idea on the timing and transitions between all steps of the entire effect. To lay the groundwork for this project, I started by creating the basic shaders for particles, like alpha blend and additive transparency shaders, as well as 3D models and textures. By starting with these foundational elements, I was able to establish a solid base quickly. For the first step of this effect, the first major component that I had to work on was the art. I had to first model it, sculpt it, and texture it. It was quite interesting, but a bit gross, with all those pipes going everywhere. References was a key element here, because a human heart is quite complex. Then, I made a custom shader to have a special rendering for this component by playing around with Fresnels and Vertex Displacement to emulate the pumping animation of the heart. For the stained glass component, the texture was already usable from my additional document I've made for the concept art category. I basically applied the texture to a 3D plane and made a custom shader with rays panning from the center of the stained glass to add flow and subtle movement to a rather static component. With the addition of two lights and the circular aura component, I completed the first step of the effect and I was quite satisfied with the render of it and its level of detail. To make the second step of the concept into reality, it was time for the big technical and artistical challenge of the effect, the phones. Although I initially underestimated the difficulty of creating convincing fonts, the real challenge turned out to be achieving a decent look for the gross and dissolve animation. Fortunately, I found a great tutorial by Polytoots on creating a gross feature in Shader. Although the component needed some polishing and adjustments to its timing and gross behavior, it was good enough to be left alone for a while so I could focus on creating other components, such as the heat effect. I was fortunate to have not matched all of my layers in my concept art Photoshop file, allowing me to quickly export the individual visual layers of the heat effect. This saved me a lot of production time, and was quite satisfying to make this part of the effect work that quickly. After that, I moved on to create the first step with a big beam. For the beam component itself, I used a cylinder cut in half and applied on it a static texture. I then used a panning noise texture 
to animate the base static texture by distorting its UVs. Finally, I used a color ramp to colorize the beam. This texture will assign different colors to specific shades of grays of my beam. I then created the other components that add that extra complexity to the beam step, such as the dark fumes and additive red blood dot. Later on, I decided to make some changes to the font's dissolve and burning line tech. Instead of dissolving along the mesh lengths, I opted for a radial dissolve that utilized the vertex position to create a radial mask. This helped to emphasize the vertical radial deflagration of the beam. With all the components linked together and working seamlessly, it was time to focus on polishing the effect. In this final step, I've incorporated additional elements such as distortion at the end of the beam or particles. I've also adjusted the timing of different components. However, the most significant improvement was the addition of camera work, which enhanced the impact of the effect. While this kind of effect should be impactful without the need for camera work, when done correctly, with subtle screen shakes and zoom, it truly enhances the overall presentation. The effect will not look as good without the feedback mainly coming from Tengi, Ferrik, and Smirkis one of the hosts of this challenge. Their input regarding colors, timing, and technical insights greatly contributed to the improvement of the effect. I am extremely grateful for their support and expertise. Once the effect was complete, my focus shifted towards preparing all the necessary deliverables for my submission, like the presentation shot video, where I had to render my effect from at least two different camera angles and the breakdown video, showing the methods used for assembling major particle systems with their individual emitters, shaders, textures, and 3D models. All of it can be found in my submission post. Link will be in the description of this video. Publication was a key element throughout the entire change, just like with the concept art category. This time, however, I made sure to post more work in progress updates on the website and social media. To make it easier for viewers, I converted these videos into GIFs that will play automatically on the website. Careful consideration was given to the first frame of each GIF as it will become the thumbnail of my submission post on ArtStation. And I wanted to entice viewers and encourage them to check out my entry and leave feedback. In conclusion, I want to express my sincere gratitude to the station team, hosts, and judges for making this event possible. The freedom to create something truly unique and personal while still having guidelines was an incredible experience. It was an honor to have my work featured alongside so many talented artists, and I'm grateful to those who choose to bring my concepts arts to life in their submissions. The feedback and the comments I received were invaluable, and I appreciate every single one of them. I hope you enjoyed this video series and found it helpful in some way. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out. And don't forget to check out P2Design for more content like this. Thank you for watching this video, and I see you soon. Bye bye!